I once got a phone call. Hello, is it Dr. Eichstein? I said, yes. This is DC Comics. Well, can we ask you some questions? I said, sure. We have a new comic book we're illustrating, and we want to know if we can illustrate Superman visiting the Hayden Planetarium. Will you give permission for this? Yeah, I mean, wh wh who's going to say no to that, right? So I said, what's up? And they said, oh, Superman, in this, in this story that they're telling, is going to come to the planetarium to use our special tools of visualization and telescopes and things to see the destruction of Krypton, which is finally reaching Earth. Mm. And I said, ooh, that's good. That's good. But I had to, I had to, I, I had to dig in. And I said, all right, Superman was launched Moses style in a basket as an infant, arrived on Earth in that same basket as an infant. And anyone who knows infants knows that a month, two months, you know the difference between the baby who's two months old and with the three months old. This baby did not age. So there's only two ways, I'm telling this guy on the phone, <laughs> only two ways, and he's taking notes, right? He didn't argue with anything I was telling him. I said the two ways it could have gotten here. If he traveled, this because they're aliens, so they could do what they want. If he traveled the speed of light to Earth, he would not age relative to Earth, because that's Einstein's relativity. However, if he's traveling the speed of light, so is the destruction of Krypton. That light, those light beams from the destruction would be right alongside him and he'd land on Earth, you'd see Krypton destroyed, he couldn't show up later and then observe the event. So, I, so you can't, it, can't, you, it can't be the speed of light. It was so at I this said, point, the gentleman from DC Comics knew that he had made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs>